Montana. First, first I very much thank my colleague from Rhode Island uh, for all his work in many areas. A uh, great senator, um, great statesman, actually, and a great representative of the people of the state of Rhode Island, and also for his works on the, and the, and the resource legislation that he mentioned. I think I, at this point, I um, want to add my thanks to all the those who worked on the recently passed immigration bill. Senator Graham made a point of thanking senators. I want to also thank all the so-called Gang of Eight, Senator Schumer, Senator Menendez, Senator Rubio, Senator Bennett, Senator Durbin, Senator Graham, Senator Flake, and Senator McCain for their great work. They worked very hard to get that bill together. And of course, Senator Corker and Senator Hoven, who came up with the key amendment to put the bill over the finish line. And as hats off to the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Senator Leahy, and of course our leader, Senator Reid, who helped marshal all those efforts. I think they've done a, they did a great job. And there's no end to the commendation that they should receive. Mr. President, <clears throat> <clears throat> on a totally other, another matter. The philosopher Bertrand Russell said, and I quote him, the greatest challenge to any thinker is stating the problem in a way that will allow a solution. I come to the floor today with my good friend, Senator Orrin Hatch, to state our concerns about a national problem that's holding back our economy. We're here to call on our colleagues to provide ideas that will allow a solution. First, the problem. Mr. President, America's tax code is complex, it's inefficient, and acting as a brake on our economy. Senator Hatch and I believe it is in need of serious overhaul. It has been close to three decades since the last major revisions to the tax code. In that time, Congress has made about 15,000 changes to the tax code, 15,000 over three decades. The code now contains nearly four million words. Here it is, right here. The tax code. This is America's tax code. All 24 pounds of it. Paperback. Just think how heavy it'd be for a hardcover. <laughs> it would take more than 18 days nonstop to read the tax code. In fact, it takes the average taxpayer 13 hours to gather and compile the receipts and forms to comply with the code. And it costs Americans $160 billion a year just to comply with the code, let alone the taxes the Americans pay. This complexity in the code is eroding confidence in our economy and creating uncertainty for America's families and businesses. Clearly, the tax code is broken. That's the problem, and it's a serious one. The solution calls for a more simple, more fair tax code, one that will allow growth, the economy to grow and to create jobs. For the past three years, Senator Hatch and I have been working closely with all the members of the Senate Finance Committee to reach that goal through comprehensive tax reform. We've held more than 30 hearings. We've heard from hundreds of experts about how tax reform can simplify the system for families, help businesses innovate, and make the U.S. more competitive. Mr. President. From Utah. I want to thank my friend from Montana for all the hard work uh, that he has done with regard to the Senate Finance Committee and, of course, this tax set of problems that we have in this country. He's been truly dedicated to reforming our nation's tax code and truly dedicated to doing it in a bipartisan manner, which is something I very much appreciate. Our work together is starting to pay off. Tax reform is building momentum. Over the past three months, we have issued 10 bipartisan option papers, that options papers, I should say, that detail reform proposals in every area of the tax code. The full committee has met on a weekly basis to discuss these options. We've made tremendous progress. We are now entering the home stretch. All of this under the leadership of Senator Baucus. Senator Baucus and I are here today to call on all of our colleagues, all of our colleagues in the Senate, to now provide their input to help us get tax reform over the finish line. We have a historic opportunity to do tax reform in this Congress, to make the code simpler and fairer for the people we serve. 
We are determined to make it happen, but we need every member's participation. In order to make sure that we end up with a simpler, more efficient, and fairer tax code, we believe it is important to start with a blank slate. A tax code without all of the special provisions in the form of exclusions, deductions, and credits, and other tax ex or preferences that some refer to as tax expenditures. Mr. President, I might say this blank slate is, is not, of course, the end of the discussion. We don't just clear the decks and stop. <laughs> some of the provisions in the code obviously serve very important objections, and that's why in the main that's there in the first place. And some we will need to keep, clearly. Why? To make sure the tax code is at least as progressive after tax reform as it is today. And I want to emphasize that this approach is just a starting point. It's not a proposal. This is just a good, fair, balanced um, way, uh, a good faith way, including all members of the Senate, to get started. And uh, we believe it's going to lead to a solution. Um, kind of the way that Bertrand Russell suggested, you got to state the problem the way it's going to lead to a solution. We, we, we think this is a good way to get to that solution. <clears throat> Mr. President, indeed, we both believe that some existing tax expenditures should be preserved in some form. But the tax code is also littered with preferences for special interests. To make sure that we clear out all the unproductive provisions and simplify the tax code, we plan to, uh, we plan to operate from an assumption that all special provisions are out unless there is clear evidence that they, number one, help grow the economy, number two, help make the tax code fairer, or number three, and number three, effectively promote other important policy objectives. Uh, now that we have a blank slate, we're asking all senators, that's all senators, senators on the committee, senators off the committee, to submit detailed legislative proposals. And that is what, what they think, and that is tax expenditures, which they, th as tax expenditures, you know, the credits, the reductions, exclusions, which they think should be added back as meet the test for, for growth and, and for jobs, as well as any other provisions that senators might have in mind that, that they think should be added, or any repeals that they think make sense, or re other reforms that they think make sense. In order to help guide our colleagues' submissions, we've released some rough estimates that the Joint Committee on Taxation and our staff have been working on. Uh, these estimates show uh, how much the rates would rise, for example, if we add back tax expenditures and keep the current level of progressivity compared to a blank slate. And we put this out today. Why? Because we wanted everybody to know that there's a trade-off involved. That is, when you keep tax expenditures, um, there's going to be a, an increase in rates, certainly compared with what otherwise would start with. And the more tax expenditures there are, the less revenue there is for rate reduction and deficit reduction, and the more complicated our tax code will end up being. We're giving uh, senators one month to send us their submissions. We will give preference to bipartisan proposals. This input will make up the foundation of the committee's tax reform proposal. We want to ensure that the bipartisan bill we introduce has broad input and buy-in from across the Senate. We can't let comprehensive tax reform get bogged down in politics. Only a bipartisan bill can become law. We also need to remember this is not um, just about tax expenditures. There's much more to it than just confining our discussion to tax expenditures, because at its core, tax reform means making the tax uh, code more fair, um, easier to deal with for families all across our country. And there are a lot of loopholes, on the other hand, in the code that we should get rid of. Uh, people, who can avoid, uh, people who can afford fancy tax advisors shouldn't be able to take advantage of loopholes that regular Americans don't have available to them. And as chairman and ranking member of the uh, committee, we are determined to complete tax reform this Congress. We cannot afford to be complacent. Improving the tax code provides a great opportunity to spark economic growth, to really create jobs and make United States businesses more competitive. I might add at this point, Mr. President, other countries are modernizing their code. And uh, we're going to be left in the dust if we don't modernize ours. So we need to hear from our colleagues uh, as to what provisions they think can help us reach those goals. I have a great partner in this submission, my good friend, Senator Hatch. 
Um, and I'll keep communicating and working with the administration and the Senate leadership and move the ball forward because working together, we can get this done. I believe strongly that nothing of consequence ever happens around here. One person tries to accomplish something alone on his behalf or her behalf. Rather, matters of consequence are, are accomplished when people work together. And we clearly want matter, matter of consequence to pass here, and we will do so by working together. Mr. President, it is a privilege to work with Senator Baucus, our chairman, uh, on improving the tax code, on updating it for the 21st century. Mm -hmm. This provides a great opportunity to give families certainty, spark economic growth, create jobs, and make the United States businesses more competitive. It, if, we, if it's done right, it can, provide, it can really uh, provide America with a real shot in the arm. My friend from Montana began this discussion with a quote, and I feel it only appropriate to conclude with one as well. Abraham Lincoln said, quote, determine the thing that can and shall be done and then we shall find the way, unquote. We are determined to, to, <clears throat> to craft a fair and simpler tax code. Working together, I think we can find the way. <coughs> and I want to compliment the distinguished senator from uh, Montana for the work he's already done, for the work the committee's already done, the hearings we've held, the uh, meetings we've held on these options papers, and uh, for his general zeal in leading the charge here on this, uh, on this question of, of uh, shall we or shall we not reform our tax code. If you look at that stack of uh, tax code books that stood this high, uh, <coughs> uh, you realize that there's, it's time to simplify that, that doggone mess. And uh, I think we can do it, but it's gonna take a bipartisan effort. It's gonna take all of us working closely. It's going to take everybody on the Finance Committee doing the things that it really takes to bring ta tax reform alive. In 1986, it took uh, three years to get the 86 bill done. I don't think we have three years. I think we're going to have to do it now or it won't be done. So I, uh, I just want to personally express my admiration and, and uh, friendship for the distinguished senator from Montana. I intend to help him every step of the way. And I believe we have a tremendous contingent of senators on the Finance Committee, uh, as good as any time that committee uh, has been staffed uh, <coughs> in the history of the Finance Committee. The senators we have there are all solid. They're all uh, fully in, 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 in embracing this in the sense of trying to come up with the very best reform we can. And I have to say, we have, I think, the best staff that committee's ever had as well. And that's saying something, because it's always had great staff. The Finance Committee has always been one of the greatest committees in, in the Congress, as it should be. And uh, I have to say, under the leadership of the distinguished senator from Montana, uh, it's no exception uh, this time. We have uh, <coughs> great people on the staff, and uh, we intend to see if we can get this done. I want to thank my colleague for his great work in this area. Yep. Thanks, Senator. It's mutual.